welcome to this stateless code video and this is part of a series of videos we do with where we install and set up configure software uh, we also have a bunch of coding videos this is kind of lays the groundwork for that so if you um, need to install tools install um, dependencies those sorts of things we have videos for that in this video I'm going to be installing VirtualBox uh, which is a virtual is it like a GUI virtualization um, system it's been around for a while it's currently I don't know what, what the entire history of it is but it's currently owned and maintained by Oracle um, and it is available so the way that it works is you've got a host machine like in this case I've got a uh, an Ubuntu 2204 host I've got a Windows 10 host and I've got an Intel Mac host. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to install on each of those. Uh, depending on what you've got, you can just skip this video. will have chapters. Skip to the one that's relevant to you. And then after everything's installed, we'll go in and like uh, launch VirtualBox and configure it and kind of talk about how it works. Uh, this is less necessary now than it was, I don't know, 10 years ago. So from probably 2014 to 2020, before the advent of Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, I used VirtualBox very heavily um, kind of in my day to day uh, at work. So I was on a Windows, uh, in a Windows shop doing Ruby on Rails development, which is much better in Linux than it is in Windows. Um, and so I um, was running and doing most of my development in a, uh, a Linux guest on that um, that Windows host machine. So we've reached that part where we're going to split off into the different systems. So first is going to be Ubuntu, then Windows, and then Mac OS. So kind of a choose your own adventure, or I prefer Final Fantasy VI, choose a scenario, Kupo type of deal where you go and split off into your three things and then we'll come back and we'll fight Kefka and Narsh. So um, pick the OS that you want, install along with that, and then uh, kind of go back to the post install chapter. You can skip the other two. Uh, so we're going to try to take a look at and download first. This is the um, Ubuntu 2204 um, host. If you are going one of the other hosts, you can skip ahead in the chapter to the next um, portion. And then uh, once you've got it installed, uh, there'll be a chapter for kind of post install setup. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to, um, this is virtualbox.org is the site here. And we are going to click download VirtualBox here. Uh, this is being recorded on April 27th, 2024. And we've got a big red box here. Um, please refrain from upgrading to 7.0.16. So uh, these are all the different hosts for 7.0.16. Uh, I'm going to scroll down and see if I have some other options here. So we've got a virtual box older builds section here. I'm going to click here. Um, and then it looks like all sub 7.0 versions of VirtualBox are um, no longer supported. So uh, 7.0 is the only game in town um, for supported um, and um, security fixes and stuff like that on your software. Uh, so 7.0.16 is the current version. I'm going to install the latest, not that version. I'm going to go down to um, Linux hosts find Ubuntu 2204 and I'm going to click on it. That takes it to my downloads folder. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my downloads folder. Rip virtual box. So, and now I'm going to take this 
control shift C and then I'm going to um, do sudo apt install f paste in that value unable to locate Okay, that is interesting. Right. We'll just do it that way. Unable to locate package. Let me, I'll pause and Google this. We leave the mistakes in the videos and issues that come up uh, so that if you run into a similar issue, um, hopefully you'll be able to follow along with me as I rectify it. All right, I am back. Um, this was a fairly dumb and easy thing to fix. Um, so I started Googling around and noticed the command here, the dot slash before the um, path to the file. So I'm going to retry this. We'll do the dash F version of it and then we'll do a dot slash here. We will agree to the storage. All right, we've got it installed. Um, if I hit my super key and start typing VirtualBox. It's not going to show it on this screen, but if I I'm hit super and started um, typing it out. So um, we've got the version here installed. So we'll now move on and try to get this done on Windows and then we'll be back. Welcome Windows users. We have reached the path where we install VirtualBox on Windows. So I'm up here on virtualbox.org and we're going to click on the download VirtualBox here. And you can see here, attention, please refrain from upgrading to 7.0.16. Uh, I'm recording this on April 27th, 2024, and um, usually I think you can just pick whatever the um, the normal latest version here is. What we're going to do is we're going to see if there are, uh, and we can see here, older builds. So we're going to click on this older builds link here. We can see it gives here that uh, 7.0 is the only version of VirtualBox that's currently being maintained and receiving security updates, whatever the other, all earlier versions are end of life. So um, we're gonna pick 7.0 here and we're going to go for 7.0.14 and we are dealing with a Windows host. So we're going to click here, going to download, you will click show all downloads. It will show up on the other screen. Uh, so we're going to double click on this. It prompted for administrator. And it's also on the other screen. So um, pops up. Welcome to the setup wizard. Click next. Um, I'm just going to go with the defaults here. Installing, reset your network connection and temporarily disconnect you from the network. I'll give it a shot. Um, 
I don't think it'll crash OBS, but we'll find out. Missing dependencies. So installing bindings requires the Python core package and the Win32 API bindings to be installed first. When continuing installation of the Oracle VM VirtualBox uh, Python bindings now, those need to be set up manually and later refer to the SDK manual for information. Proceed with inf installation now. I'll give it a shot and we'll see what happens. And then we'll click install to begin the installation. Looks like it's complete. We will, we have the box checked here to start it after we click finish. What do you know, it launched in the other window as well. Going to let's see here about so 7.0.14 uh, we will um, go to Mac uh, Intel Mac and then we'll kind of all join back together you can skip to the post install um, chapter of this video. So we're now at the point where I'm going to attempt to, I'm now logged in on an Intel MacBook uh, and we're going to attempt to install VirtualBox on a Mac. If you're using one of the um, kind of post Intel M1, M2, M3 type Macs, um, you're not going to be able to install VirtualBox. Oracle isn't um, supporting it. So there are alternatives if you can inform afford an M series Mac, you can probably afford to get parallels or uh, whatever other paid alternative you want for virtualization on your Mac. Uh, so we're going to click download VirtualBox 7.0 here. Um, you can see here there's a warning about 7.0.16. This is being recorded on April 27th, 2024. And um, I'm going to go down you can see here there's a section with VirtualBox older builds we're going to click on that uh, only version 7.0 is currently supported all the other versions um, below that are end of life so i'm going to click on 7.0 7.0.14 and we're going to choose mac os intel hosts that is completed on my other item. It's a .dmg file. Um, and this is what opens when you um, click on it in your downloads. Um, so we're going to double click on the virtualbox.pkg. Pulls up a wizard. And we'll install for all users on this computer. Just go in the default applications folder. Enter your Mac user's password, or if you're not an admin on your Mac, get the admin to install this for you, or choose just install it for me. So there's a warning on the on the other screen, uh, background item added, uh, VirtualBox added items that can run in the background. You can manage this in login items settings. Um, so it says the install installation was successful we sure will move the installer to the trash. And then I'm going to try to do a command space. It's happening on the other screen again um, and type in virtual box. And 
and it looks like we are up and running. The older versions of Oracle VirtualBox, um, like I previously had six installed on this, and every time there was a Mac update, there'd be an, uh, a warning that um, that uses kernel extensions and won't be supported on future versions. I think if you're on 7.0, you should be good. Um, we go to help here. VirtualBox about VirtualBox and it gives the information about the build so we'll um, see you once we rejoin our split party and we'll go from there all right so we've gone through you've chosen your scenario uh, the parties have split off done their scenarios come back together we're in Narsh, time to fight Kafka. Uh, so now we're going to go through just some basics of the VirtualBox interface, uh, try to get a, um, a version of this up and running, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, so th there are a bunch of different, let me exit out of here. So when you launch VirtualBox after installing it, you'll, you'll get something roughly equivalent to equivalent to this, depending on whether you're in Windows, Mac, uh, this is the um, Ubuntu version of this. Uh, so we're going to take a look. This is kind of the general level preferences. So uh, it lets you pick a default machine folder, um, an authentication library, uh, the input here, one of the things you want to do is make sure you know what your host key is. I typically, uh, it looks like this one defaulted to right control. Sometimes on, after an install, it'll be like the left command in Mac or something like that. Um, my, I, I never use the right control or right command key. So I typically make that my host key so that I can still use the left control in my guest system um, when I'm working through here. And it has... Examples like if you want to go full screen, you would be host key plus F. Uh, they also have a uh, scaled mode and kind of all these different things that you can play around with um, in your own time once you've got things going. The, let's see here, display. This is going to be important. I'm going to set this maximum guest screen size to none. Um, and then scaling, you can choose your um, scaling factor. So this is, I'm running on this on a 4K monitor. The guest is probably not going to go higher than 1920 um, by 1080. So I'll make this, actually type it in, 200% scale for my default. If you've got a proxy server, you can set proxy settings and stuff like that here. Hit OK. And now we're going to um, create a machine. You can see in the background here, I've got some old uh, virtual box hard drives, uh, files that will use one of them to launch this. Uh, so we're going to click New here. Um, we're going to, I'm going to call this one Or ISO image. So if you were doing a clean install and doing a setup here of something that didn't already have an existing hard drive, you could pick a an ISO image from the um, from your hard drive. Um, be the equivalent of either taking that ISO and throwing it into the optical drive or into a bootable USB um, to kind of do the, the initial install of that. I'll be doing. Uh, a follow-up video where I do this with uh, Ubuntu 2404 um, using VirtualBox because it's the easiest way to screencast the install of the operating system. Um, and then we're going to click Expert Mode here since we already have a hard disk. Um, and we click Hard Disk here. We're going to choose um, use an existing virtual hard disk file. 
gonna pick add here and we're gonna go other locations box hard drives and we'll go with the just the general one here we'll hit choose And then go back to our name and operating system. It looks like that got cleared out when I did that. So we're gonna um, so this is now an eight years old uh, operating system. Uh, and once you start typing, it kind of detects what your your type and version is there. Uh, we're gonna hit finish now. And um, now it, it shows up. Uh, it, uh, if we go to settings, we're going to do this next. Um, take a look. Shared clipboard, we'll leave disabled for now. Uh, but you, that, that can be very handy if you want to do um, host to guest or guest to host bi directional uh, clipboards or drag and drop type stuff if you want to get files to and from the um, disk. Um, you can do a disk encryption option if you'd like, um, kind of increase security, cost of um, uh, probably a little bit of a performance hit on it. Um, system here, this is important. So you're gonna wanna set your base memory. This machine that I'm using has 32 gigs, so I can probably go up to, uh, I don't think I'll need more than eight for this particular use case. Um, but uh, you typically, typically I, I go up to about half of the resources available on the host system. Um, you can play around and tweak that to, to your liking. If you're making heavy use of a guest system, you might want to uh, bump that up a bit. Uh, let's see here, pointing device. We're going to just pick a mouse. Processor. We'll go with two CPUs. Display, we'll bump the video memory here up to 128. Um, I'll just stick with the one monitor here. Uh, scale factor inherited from the general uh, settings here. We want, we want SVGA graphics controller Storage, this is where we set the, um, the item. If we wanted to like change, add, remove, you can do it here. Um, audio, uh, network, uh, I think I'm just gonna leave it the default values and we'll see if that gives us what we need. Um, and I don't think I'm gonna need um, USB or anything like that. You do have some user interface options here if you want to deal with them. Uh, but let's give it a shot and try to boot this old OS up. So we're gonna hit start here. I anticipate that this is going to be fairly small until we get the guest additions installed and it keeps wanting to go on to the other monitor. is booting up. All right, so we've got the eight years old stateless code logo. It kind of looks like the, in Spider-Man one, when um, Spider-Man gets his initial professional wrestling garb on. Uh, log in. And once I log in here, uh, this is obviously going to have a very old uh, version of the VirtualBox guest settings. So I'm gonna, in devices here, I'm going to choose insert guest editions CD image. I'm gonna choose run, authenticate with that 
user's password. If you're, you need to have a um, super user to be able to do this. Um, so just keep that in mind when installing your guest OS or when logging in and trying to do your guest additions, choose the root user or however. Uh, we'll pause and let this finish. It takes a few minutes. All right, so the guest additions script and in, uh, install is done. You know that says the um, these things weren't restarted automatically, so we'll hit return to close the window here. And then we're going to restart the system. Keeps going to go on to the other screen. Annoyingly so. back log in again keeps popping it over to the other screen all right give it a few moments to stabilize with that hard drive icon. Now I'm going to try some hitting right control and F to see if I can go into full screen mode now. And I'm going to choose switch. And we are up and running with our old logo. Um, we will so I'll, I'll run Sublime. I think I was working on a Rails 5 um, version of something similar to the um, Rails Getting Started guide with where you're doing a blog uh, type of deal. Getting all kinds of issues with unable to download stuff. Let me see. I'm going to do control alt T here and all right, we do have Google host. Um, I'm not even th this version of uh, the, the LTS is long gone on this, so I don't even think we'll find out. Uh, yeah, it's still hitting the Xenial security thing. So uh, obviously an eight-year-old system. Uh, it's going to have a ton of packages to be upgraded. Uh, this is out of scope for... Uh, virtual box demonstration. I think you've got the idea. Um, we will uh, be using virtual box to do some more system uh, setup videos uh, every kind of couple of years when Ubuntu comes out with a new version of um, its long term support system. Um, good to refresh kind of how to get up and starting with your developer tools. So uh, that's kind of what I'll be doing in my next several uh, of these setup and conversion or setup, not setup and convert, setup and configuration videos. Um, thanks for watching. We will um, be back with more videos and setup stuff. Uh, check out our existing setup videos, our existing coding videos. It's one thing to set up your computer. It's another thing to be able to create things with it. So um, check us out. Thanks for watching. Ruby on Rails 7 is out. Code along on a guided journey through the Rails 7 Getting Started Guide and beyond with test-driven development. 
There has never been a better time to learn Ruby on Rails. Hit the ground running with the newest version. Go to statelesscode.com slash getting started with Rails 7 to level up. Choose a scenario. Kupo. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code and Taxation is Theft.